Hello students! Welcome back to our science video. For today's lesson, we will differentiate weather from climate. We will also enumerate the different factors affecting climate change. At the end of this video, learners are expected to explain how different factors affect the climate of an area and describe certain climatic phenomena that occur on a global level. How will you differentiate weather from climate? Weather is the state of the atmosphere at a particular place during a short period of time. It involves such atmospheric phenomena as temperature, humidity, precipitation, air pressure, wind, and cloud cover. There are five major types of weather, sunny, cloudy, windy, snowy, and rainy. It is described as the sun shining and giving warmth to the land. There are little to no presence of clouds, cold temperatures, and wind, however, will also be present on some areas of the earth. A weather forecast is simply a scientific estimate of future weather condition. Weather condition is the state of the atmosphere at a given time expressed in terms of the most significant weather variables. The significant weather variables being forecast differ from place to place. In the Philippines, the weather parameters with significant variation and therefore of interest to the users of the forecast are cloudiness, rainfall, and wind. In forecasting the weather, a meteorologist must at least know something about the existing weather condition over a large area before he can make a reliable forecast. The accuracy of his forecast depends largely upon his knowledge of the prevailing weather conditions over a very wide area. The forecast decision is based on various forecasting tools. The basic tool of a weather forecaster is the weather map. Climate is the average weather conditions in a place over a long period of time, 30 years or more. And as you probably know, there are lots of different types of climates on Earth. For example, hot regions are normally closest to the equator. The climate is hotter there because the sun's light is most directly overhead at the equator. And the north and south poles are cold because the sun's light and heat are least direct there. Using this information, in the late 1800s and early 1900s, a German climate scientist named Vladimir Koppen divided the world's climate into categories. His categories were based on the temperature, the amount of precipitation, and the times of year when precipitation occurs. The categories were also influenced by a region's latitude, the imaginary lines used to measure our Earth from north to south from the equator. Today, Climate scientists split the Earth into approximately five main types of climates. They are Tropical In this hot and humid zone, the average temperatures are greater than 64 degrees Fahrenheit or 18 degrees Celsius year-round and there is more than 59 inches of precipitation each year. Dry These climate zones are so dry because moisture is rapidly evaporated from the air and there is very little precipitation. Temperate. In this zone, there are typically warm and humid summers with thunderstorms and mild winters. Continental. These regions have warm to cool summers and very cold winters. In the winter, this zone can experience snowstorms, strong winds, and very cold temperatures, sometimes falling below 22 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 30 degrees Celsius. And lastly, polar. In the polar climate zones, it's extremely cold. Even in summer, the temperature here never go higher than 50 degrees Fahrenheit or 10 degrees Celsius. What are the factors affecting climate change? Volcanic eruptions. Volcanoes can impact climate change. During major explosive eruptions, huge amounts of volcanic gas, Aerosol droplets and ash are ejected into the stratosphere. Injected ash falls rapidly from the stratosphere, most of it is removed within several days to weeks, and has little impact on climate change. But volcanic gases like sulfur dioxide can cause global cooling. 
while volcanic carbon dioxide, a greenhouse gas, has the potential to promote global warming. Deforestation When trees are cut down and burned or allowed to rot, their stored carbon is released into the air as carbon dioxide. And this is how deforestation and forest degradation contribute to global warming. Deforestation not only affects the climate by increasing the atmospheric level of carbon dioxide, but also affects the environment by inhibiting water recycling, triggering severe flooding, aquifer depletion, soil degradation, and the extinction of plant and animal species. El Niño Phenomenon El Niño refers to unusually warm water that forms across the tropical eastern and central Pacific. The time between the recurrence of El Niño events is typically 3 to 7 years. During an El Niño, pressure in sea levels becomes lower in the eastern Pacific and higher in the western Pacific. This means very high atmospheric temperatures in affected countries and in some areas even drought. The counterpart of El Niño is La Niña, which is associated with low temperatures and heavier than usual rainfalls in affected areas. Ocean currents are a continuous and directed movement of the ocean water. This happens through forces acting on the water such as difference in salinity, waves breaking, temperature, the wind or even the Coriolis effect. The direction of the current is determined by the depth of the contours, other current acting on the ocean, and the nature of the shoreline. As the horizontal currents are moving south or northwards, they carry with them cool or warm water over an extended distance. It is the displaced water that affects the air by warming or cooling it, thereby transferring the same effect to the land surface over which it blows. This is how ocean currents affect climate. Solar activities refers to the solar irradiance, solar magnetic field or cosmic rays, ultraviolet radiation or UV, and others. Wild forest fires releases carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. This is one of the greenhouse gases that trap heat in the atmosphere. Every time there is a forest fire, more carbon dioxide contributes to global warming by trapping heat in the atmosphere. Changes in climate can result in impacts to local air quality. Emissions of pollutants into the air can result in changes to the climate. Ozone in the atmosphere warms the climate, while different components of particulate matter can have either warming or cooling effects on the climate. A greenhouse gas is a gas that absorbs and emits radiant energy within the thermal infrared range causing the greenhouse effect. The primary greenhouse gases in Earth's atmosphere are water vapor, carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, and ozone. The lower atmosphere is likely to warm, changing weather and climate. Thus, the enhanced greenhouse effect is additional to the natural greenhouse effect and is due to human activity changing the makeup of the atmosphere. The enhanced greenhouse effect is often referred to as global warming. Thank you for watching. Do not forget to subscribe for more science educational videos by clicking the notification bell.